Welcome to the Porn Sacrifice channel. This is part of the 924S Turbo build, fresh off the welding shame of part 34. Um, I now have the downpipe uh, in place. It's not hooked up, there's still work to do there, um, but at least I've got an idea of where things are going to go and what space is going to be available um, elsewhere in the engine bay for other activities. To that end I have also got out this. Uh, I know air filters are a very contentious subject so um, I won't go into the whys and wherefores but I've got this cone filter which is going to be going on at some point, Ken and Jobby, which seems to be somewhat preferred for these engines but uh, who knows what the prevailing wisdom is uh, from any one week to the next. This isn't going to be going on this time um, but it takes up quite a bit of space so I just want to get a rough idea of where it's going to sit so that I um, can try and sort of work out where I want other things to go. Um, what other things? Well, let me tell you. Uh, first of all is a water pump kit. So this is a Davies Craig electric water pump. So this is the, um, what is this, this, I can't remember which one I've got now. I think this is the EWP 150, um, which is the one that's specified for turbocharged engines. If it's not turbocharged, then you actually go a lot smaller. Um, so with this, the, the two, two reasons for getting this, one uh, slightly controversial is that it takes the load off of the belt system on the engine that will be required for driving a mechanical uh, water pump which is the usual one. Um, that's slightly controversial because essentially what you end up doing is putting more load on the alternator. Um, so give with one hand, take with the other. I thought I'd do a little far side chat about something that I don't necessarily understand particularly well. Um, so yeah, this uh, with the pump, it doesn't actually need to be mounted, but uh, I think I'm going to do that anyway. Um, uh, just because it's, I mean, that doesn't really show you anything, um, but it is reasonably heavy. Uh, the, there's the option here to, to just have hoses on or to go for AN fittings. Um, I did have ideas and I may come back and do this at some point about using AN fittings um, but need to obviously get those welded to the um, to the radiator side and everything else so that can wait I think uh, on that one. Now the neat thing with this, so with the controller when this is all hooked up uh, and just to run through this essentially what this will do is it's got its own temperature sensor um, I'm, I've taken out or I'm going to leave out the um, the standard mechanical thermostat from the engine so that's not going to get in the way of, of any of this in terms of blocking water flow. Um, this doesn't power the, um, the fan, essentially this goes to the fan relay um, which will just do the normal job of telling it when to uh, stop and start. Um, so there's the uh, focus ST um, uh, fan that's uh, in there so that's all good to go. Um, there is a second coolant temperature thing on the which is going to be on the back of the engine that's the one that will go until the ECU what's up um, and this is quite neat um, essentially when it's on um, or when you start the car, um, and this is this is one of the other features which I quite liked about it, is uh, rather than the normal pump which starts um, belt driven, so when you start the engine it starts walloping water around. What this does is when the engine uh, temperature is low, um, or the, the coolant temperature is low, it essentially does a burst of 10 seconds firing the water around then it stops for 30 seconds then it does 10 seconds again and so on and so forth just to keep the uh, to keep the water moving around uh, and what it does I think when it's 20 degrees Celsius below the target temperature so you set your target running temperature um, uh, someone when it's uh, reaches that point I think it's 20 degrees 
yeah, um, then essentially it does uh, 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Um, and when it gets to within five degrees, uh, then it just runs normally, uh, which is great. And then when you hit the temperature, the, the highest temperature that you would expect, um, that's when it does the usual thing of the, the fans, the pumps when I'm running constantly and then the, the fan also kicks in. So from that perspective it's quite efficient. Um, so there was a question um, from somebody, so I've forgotten the name, uh, around the fact that with the um, uh, the oil cooling side of it um, of removing the water element and just going for an air oil cooler uh, on the front. I'm hoping the fact that this is going to be more efficient will also help manage the oil temperature both in terms of bringing the temperature up but then also maintaining it as well. Um, but I'll keep that under review as I've said before. There's also, I think this is there's an alarm for if things start to go wrong. There's a whole bunch of diagnostics on here as well um, which you wouldn't expect to see normally and then there's also an override button which I believe is that one. So if you push this um, uh, and it's all connected, obviously not now, uh, if you push that that's when it then starts to go, um, not necessarily go bananas but it will just, the um, fan will come on and the, um, the coolant pump will trigger uh, as well. Um, so potentially uh, if the oil temperature starts to get up, then I can actually use this to uh, trigger the fan on as well. So um, although that won't, the two won't operate together, at least I can get the, the fan going. Um, I just need to get a battery that's gonna hold up to all of this. So that's where we go. So now uh, I need to have a look at seeing where this is gonna be placed inside the engine bay. Right, you can kind of see the space issues that I'm going to have, bearing in mind that this is going to need to live in here somewhere, I think. Um, I've got belts going across there, I'm going to have to put some brackets on a few of these things to keep them off the belt. Um, and yeah, I going to try and leave that side for air stuff, and over here what I want to do is try and get this basically down there. Um, partly I think what I'll do, let me have a look and see, I think if I can get it down and then just aim it backwards, that hose has then got a short trip out the back. Uh, yeah, so that's in. So if I mount it down there somewhere, so I'm thinking what I'll do is just basically, because this is not needing to be tight, um, is if I take a bracket off of this rail here, so hose across, in, and then just out, and then into the water pump. This is going to be super tight with where everything's having to go. I'm slightly concerned about any heat transference from the coolant water going through, but it's been through the radiators, so hopefully it won't be too bad. There's one hole here which was for the um, P clamp for the cables. So uh, what I'm going to do is use this second one as well, and then just have these two holes and then get something which will go down over the side and just get that into place. We are now back at the arts and crafts stage again. It's been a while since we've played with card, but uh, I just need to do a little template to try and work out where this is all gonna fit.
So I've got the bracket mounted and bolts in there nicely. The little stud things that I hammer down on just to mark the position. I need to nudge the cables up a bit, but that'll sit nicely under there. Uh, and away from that. So that's all good. Hope we're doing all right for continuity. This is a week later after the break uh, where I was messing around with the turbo. So I've got my plate made with the little holes in it and I've got my oops water pump um, and essentially that will just attach on there. Water in, that's the front of the car radiator. Water in, water out to engine. And this has got I'll show you here some very small holes from which to attach it to the uh, engine. So you can see those just around the edge there, pull the focus nicely. And I've got these tiny little three mil um, fasteners to go through there, and then some nylock nuts to hold them on just because they're so small. I um, uh, I don't want to be doing them up too tight and with the engine vibrations I don't want them working loose over time. So I have got a 3mm drill bit ready to go which is the right size and uh, yeah so um, I just need to get that drilled and mounted. There's probably going to be some um, dampening which I'll put under here uh, at some point just to dampen the vibrations although I'm sure that's fine um, uh, so yeah I just need to get a few holes drilled uh, and then get this back on the car and then I'll just have a look at the routing for the wiring although obviously not much else is going to happen with that just yet And there we have it, that's the first bit of this job done in terms of the actual physical location and mounting. I still need to get some hoses for this, um, but as you can see here, without the uh, intake uh, pipe in the way, um, it's mounted there nicely and we've got the um, cable just coming out of the top there um, through the routing for the other stuff. So I need to have a look at that now and just see what the um, the loom part looks like and where I need to just route that through uh, into the car. Okay, we haven't been in the car for a while. This is this is quite cool, although it always takes about five minutes to get the damn camera set up. Uh, just a little peek behind the curtain there. So um, the idea had been now that the the water pumps in place and and sorted there. Um, the I was going to hook up the or basically pass through the temperature sensor and the pump uh, leads as well but they've the connectors on the end are actually quite bulky so instead I'm going to wait until the cables are coming back through when I'm doing the electrics because I need to have a look and see what I can pull out of the Porsche loom um, so a lot of the engine stuff doesn't need to be in there so let's get rid of it and save some wiring and save some weight. The other bit uh, which has prompted me actually is the, um, the live on here. I was thinking that needs to go through but actually the battery is going to be moved into the back of the car. Um, I still need to do that. I've got the relocation kit. What I need to do is get a battery that's going to go in here, so something a bit newer, um, either that's properly vented or a dry cell battery. So we will see on that. The other thing for the control module, um, I'm going to, obviously this is important, 
um, to be able to see but what I might do is just see if I can mount this slightly discreetly because I want to try and keep things as analog as possible which is a bit daft really given the purpose of what the car is going to be being used for um, so I might see if I have a change of heart on that one um, yeah if you've stuck with me this long through uh, the episode and also the, the series uh, well done and uh, thanks for watching Hopefully catch you again fairly soon. Cheers.